so I'm back out enjoying the outdoors again and admittedly this isn't even the location I had in mind originally uh, I had intended on visiting a sort of little town near where I live but when I got there they've suddenly built this new car park that you have to pay for you used to just be able to drive there park for free now they've brought in this new car park and I never carry cash on me so I couldn't pay for the car park so instead I've ended up in this nearby woodland area as well but actually it's all worked out for the best because it's autumn the leaves are beginning to turn and it is absolutely beautiful here so it's all worked out for the best so aside from just enjoying this beautiful woodland area uh, I also wanted to talk about AI artificial intelligent editing So it's a very dull overcast day, it's also getting quite late in the day as well actually. Uh, on top of that, I'm of course in woodland so I'm under a lot of trees so there's not a lot, not a lot of light getting through so video quality might not be great, especially since I'm filming this on my little Osmo Action. Uh, so apologies if the video is not great but we'll continue anyway. Um, yeah like I say I wanted to talk about Luminar AI, a new photo editing software by Skylum, which is just about to be released. So Luminar AI is the first photo editing software to make complete use of artificial intelligence to both analyze and edit your photos. So to give a brief overview of what it will do, when you import your photo, it will then analyze your photo and decide what edits it thinks you should apply to that photo and then any of those edits you want to apply you can just apply in amount of seconds uh, with sliders and such like so more specifically just just some of the things it can do it can analyze your photos and then look at it compositionally and it can crop your photos for you based on the, the well-known popular composition rules and not just rule of thirds it knows all the composition rules and it will decide which one is best for your photo and then it can crop your photo accordingly so you don't even have to compose the photo well yourself um, you can add in weather elements fog, mist, steam, rain all those types of things now, like say today, actually let me stand there, better light and you'll be able to get a better idea of what the sky is like. So a very cloudy, overcast day. Yeah, if I was to take a photo of this and thought, well actually, I would like some big epic sunset in there, burning red clouds and fire and all of that. You know, really have the sky like light up. I could do that with this software. There's so many effects and styles and things you can add in or edit to your photo whether it's landscape, portraits, cityscapes. This software will analyze the photo and come up with all these suggestions and you can apply them automatically without really having to put much time, effort or thought into it yourself. With portraits for example it can remove blemishes automatically. You don't have to learn about layers or about masking, none of that. It can all be done pretty much automatically. Now say I was to photograph this scene behind me and I wanted to add in a new sky like I suggested. Um, it will even change the colors accordingly. It will analyze the whole scene, use 3D depth and all of that to work out how the sky would affect the colours of the whole image and it will adjust the colours so it looks like it was actually lit by that fake sky. So what got me thinking about this and wanting to make this video is I watched a video recently by Thomas Heaton 
Now, for anyone who doesn't know, Thomas Eaton is a very popular landscape photog photographer, very popular on YouTube, and he became aware of this AI photo editing software, and he made a video giving his thoughts, and uh, well, he was very much against it. Uh, Thomas Eaton, I guess you could describe him as a purist. Uh, he's very much, very much in love with landscape photography, with the outdoors, uh, and has obviously put a lot of time, effort, and things into his craft. So he made several arguments why he is not a fan of this software. He said he believes uh, you lose integrity as a photographer if you rely on this. He says it's quite deceitful. Um, I guess he doesn't so much have a problem with it if you disclaim that you've used the software and had this program do all this editing for you. But obviously a lot of photographers are just gonna, or a lot of people, not so much photographers, who use this software, they'll produce this amazing looking image using it and put it on Instagram. Um, but won't necessarily disclaim that they've used the software. Which they don't have to do. It's just Thomas Heaton was making the argument that it's it's quite deceitful. Because you haven't actually learned any of the skills yourself. You haven't put in the time and effort. It's not really your doing. You can take like a bang average photo and use this software to analyze it, apply all the edits it thinks you should do to all of a sudden turn a subpar photo into something that can look quite spectacular without you having to learn any of the skills yourself. So that was one of the reasons why Thomas Heaton had a problem with it. Another thing is he thinks if you rely on this software too much you will never ever develop your own style because you'll always just be using Luminar style and therefore your photos will just end up looking like everyone else who uses who uses this software so you'll never ever really develop your own skills develop your own style and never really improve as, as a photographer now Thomas Seaton as I say very much a, a purist in landscape photography um, I can totally understand where he's coming from um, but I suspect I suspect there's something else that he's not kind of disclaimed in his video as well. Now he didn't say this on his video, but I suspect Thomas Eaton is also a bit worried because he's a professional landscape photographer. He gets paid by travel companies, travel boards for the use of his images because he's a very, very good photographer. And not just anyone can easily go out and take the kinds of images that he takes because he's very good at what he does. Yet with this new software, however, now anyone, really anyone, can go out and produce spectacular, spectacular landscape images, cityscape images, portrait images. Like say, you don't even have to compose your image particularly well. You don't have to learn all these skills. You don't have to learn really how to edit. You can just use artificial intelligence to uh, do all that stuff for you essentially. So these spectacular, amazing images, all of a sudden they're gonna be sort of 10 to the penny. Now, we've already seen on Instagram how oversaturated the market is. Um, I think this is only gonna add to the problem. If anyone, even without having to learn Photoshop, if anyone can produce photos with unbelievable skies or whatever, uh, it's only gonna make these photos more and more and more readily available. Does that lower the value of professional photographers like Thomas Eaton? And uh, I think it does. 
if all of a sudden these really beautiful landscape images are even more readily available, are companies going to pay people like Thomas Heat and other professional photographers, are they going to pay them a lot of money? Uh, I don't think they are. So unfortunately I do think this software is going to make it even harder to make a profession from photography because like I say really great images are going to become even more easily available because uh, people can use this software and whether they're a good photographer or not they can produce amazing results. So this might sound like another yeah another nail in the coffin for professional photography uh, and this might might sound like this video is a bit kind of doom and gloom but if you want to stand out as a photographer or even if you want to do if you do want to be professional then I do actually have a solution but as you can see it is getting kind of dark here now boy it got dark here real quick <laughs> um, so I'm gonna head back to my flat and then I'll share with you the solution I have back home in my flat getting very very dark it's getting a bit kind of Blair Ritchie here now well it's getting to the point now where I can barely even see the footpath I could end up getting lost here tell my mummy I love her and I'm sorry All right, we made it. So, I think particularly because of Instagram, I think we've became very, very obsessed with aesthetics. When we look at photos on Instagram, and that's how most of us consume photography these days, uh, mainly through Instagram, I would say. And when we look at photos now, we look at them in isolation, we look at one photo, a photographer uploads one photo to Instagram, it'll get a load of likes, maybe the following day or a few days later or the next week. We'll share another photo, again, just in isolation. It won't usually be uh, have, be tied into the previous photo they, they posted. We just see photos now as a single image and it'll be, you know, something which will look aesthetically pleasing but that will be it really it'll just be a photo that you think wow that looks nice usually if it's uh, portraying a particular place or a particular lifestyle and you look at it and you think wow that place looks amazing I would love to be there or wow that person's living an amazing life I would love to to be living that life too and that's all it is really and there's already an abundance of beautiful landscape, beautiful cityscape images out there. I think we've became obsessed with aesthetics, not so much with depth and with meaning. And so 
that leads me on to the solution. Yes, we've become obsessed with the aesthetics of a photo, but if you want to actually stand out, then I argue aesthetics are less important now than they were just a few years ago. If you really, really want to stand out now, then focus on story, because aesthetics can easily be replicated as we've already seen and which once artificial intelligence is editing our photos for us then it's, e it's going to be even easier to replicate. Aesthetics is very very easy to replicate. We've all seen the same photos of Buttermere in the Lake District. We've all seen the same photos of Blee Tarn in the Lake District time and time and time and time again by different photographers. You can barely tell them apart. Aesthetics, I'll say it again, aesthetics are very easy to replicate. Story, however, is not easy to replicate. It is the story and the meaning of a photo that makes it unique and that makes it powerful. Now, personally, I've already said in previous videos just recently, and as I've been talking to my friends about photography and things, I've already said myself that I want to stop taking photos purely for Instagram. So having heard about this Luminar AI, that only further confirms to me that I'm not interested anymore in this kind of shallow photography, uh, photography where you just focus on trying to take one aesthetically pleasing image that will hopefully get you a lot of likes on Instagram. Um, I'm much more interested in now in putting together a body of work around a concept and putting together a group of images which all together actually tell a story and which have real depth and real meaning. I think that's much more powerful than just just hiking to the top of a mountain at sunset, taking a photo at the summit of the nice viewpoint at sunset and just purely focusing on, on that in the hope that it's going to it's gonna go down well on, on social media and on the internet. So I urge photographers to stop photographing for likes and focus on telling a story. Now I know, admittedly, I didn't do that in this video specifically. Uh, that was just because when I was out in the woods yesterday, I was just focused on, on making this video, not so much on my, on my photography. But that's not to say, I'm not saying you should stop doing landscape photography. I'm not going to stop doing landscape photography. I'm still going to go out on hikes, take my camera with me. I'm, I'm still going to do that myself. And if that's what you love and that's what you enjoy, you should still do that. But even with landscape photography, you can still tell a story. It's not just about the, the image at the top of the hill. It's not just about that one single image. You can really tell a story with landscape photography too. You know, tell the story of the day, tell the story of the hike, you know, the, the whole day, the whole hike, the struggle it was to get up there. If you were with friends, hiking with friends, photograph your friends, photograph the mud on your boots. Um, if you end the day with, uh, you know, a good old traditional uh, meal in a country pub, Photograph the pub, photograph the meal, photograph the food that you ate, photograph the the uh, the open fire. There's so many things you can do. It's not just about that one single viewpoint at the top of the hill. You can put together a body of images which tell the story of that specific hike and that specific day. If you just wanted to photograph on one day, you could even build there's, there's so much you can do. You don't have to just focus on that on that one hike. Even you can you can spend a year, two years, focused on a particular project around landscape photography. But find a story that you're genuinely interested in, genuinely passionate about, and put time and effort into telling that story. Don't worry about or oh, I have to. I have to put out an image uh, every day. I have to put out the, the, the most beautiful image I can because I want to I want to grow on Instagram. Forget that. You're not going to stand out that way, not in the modern world. So I personally, I'm not particularly a fan of this Luminar AI. I won't be using it myself. I'll be sticking to Lightroom, but I don't, I don't have a problem with it. 
I understand it's no real surprise that this is happening. Uh, at the end of the day, it's the modern world and you can't stop technology. And I can understand how there would be a market for it. It makes complete sense. So I don't have a problem with it that way. It's just, I won't be using it myself. And if anything, it might actually be a good thing because it's only given me further clarity on the approach I want to take with photography and how I can stand out. Uh, what direction I want to go into my photography. I want to ignore what everyone else is doing and focus on what I'm passionate about and tell stories around that and focus more on projects. And I think when I originally got into photography, it was this, I was really interested in using photography as a, a tool for storytelling. Um, but like a lot of people, I guess I got lost in this kind of Instagram battle and constantly trying to photograph the likes and constantly trying to one think what's going to perform well on Instagram, what's going to get me a lot of likes. I did get lost on that and now I'm just pleased um, I'm getting away from that and I'm getting my clarity back in what direction I want to go in. Not a lot of people can tell original interesting stories in a powerful and meaningful way using photography so that's certainly what i want to focus on uh, so i'd love to see more people do that as well rather than the kind of shallow nature of a lot of photography we see certainly on social media so i hope this video has actually inspired you um but that's it for this video so thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you next time in the next one something like that thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you next time bye <laughs>